Hello, today we're going to talk about appending queries when the column headers do not have the same name, but do come in the same order. So let's say that we have a few different product lines in our business. We have the accessories product line, bikes, clothing, and components. And there's a product manager for each portfolio uh, for each product line. So product manager A over accessories, B over bikes, C over clothing, and D over components. And they each maintain all of their active products. And it's the product, the ID, the color, the cost, the price, a few other attributes. And they all maintain that same ordering from A to I. But for example, you can see accessories, standard cost with no space. In bikes, this product manager still has standard cost in column D, but there's now an underscore. And in clothing, this third product manager still has the cost in column D, but now instead of standard, it's prod abbreviated underscore cost. So when we go to append tables, we need to have a common field names for the append to work. And if it doesn't find the same names, it's going to split the columns and we're going to have missing data. So let me show you what that looks like, what those pitfalls are, and how to get around them. So we'll open a blank workbook. We'll go to the data tab. We will get data from a file from a folder. We'll find that place where all of the product managers are saving their data and we'll select that entire folder. As you can see, it, it'll bring back everything in that folder. So accessories, bikes, clothing, components. We'll select combine drop down, combine and transform. So the Power Query editor will open up here after I just select sheet and okay. And it's gonna open up quite a few queries in the queries pane on the right here, or on the left. This transform sample file is very helpful. So this will show us an example of how it treats one file and it'll treat the other three files exactly the same way. So I'll call this example and then I'll call this products. This will be, this is the actual appended table. So in this products, you can see right here we have make this smaller so we can see a little better. We have that, what file did it come from? And then out here we have standard cost. It's already been promoted as a header. We see as we scroll down, there's a null value in bikes. And if you remember that's bikes had standard underscore cost. So it's saying, hey, I don't have anything in standard cost for bikes. And that's where we can see that split data and that missing data. So. To fix it, we'll go back to this example and we will unpromote the first row. So we'll go into the transform tab. We'll click the down arrow on the use first row as headers. And we will say use headers as first row. So Power Query Editor will default to very simplistic naming convention, column one, column two, column three. Uh, which makes sense in the M programming language, as we'll see later, this is actually column zero and this is actually column one. So would have been nice if this was called column zero, but it all works nonetheless. So we'll go back to our products, our main query. And now it's looking for this product as a column name, but since we just de-promoted product, it's now called column one or column two or whatever the case may be. So 
We just need to undo this step over here in the applied steps. And now we can see source name, column one, column two ID. It looks identical to what we see over here. With the addition, obviously, of the source name field to tell us what file from that folder this data is coming from. So if we look at column four, that's where we ran into an issue. So we've got accessories, standard cost, but once we got down to bikes, we had nothing. Now you can see standard underscore cost, and it continues to bring in the values from that column. So that is good. We would like to still have headers that make sense. So we'll go back on the transform and we will use the first row as the headers. So now we've got standard cost here. We scroll back down. We do see that this, we don't want this row here, this header row, but we do still have the data. So to figure out an easy way to remove that column, um, because if I scroll down one more, to clothing now it's called product name before it was called name so a quick and simple way to get rid of the first row is to go back to your example add a column an index column and it'll just give us a you know this is row one this is row two this is row three so Go back to products, we'll see out here. Let's just move this to the front of our query so it's easier to look at. So I, I right clicked on the column, I'm coming down here to move and I'll say to beginning. And now as I scroll down to, now I called this one because that was the header. So that first thing moved into the header because we promoted the header in a previous step. When I get to bikes, one, that's the one I get want to get rid of, that one. And then when I get down to clothing, one, that's the one I want to get rid of. So we'll select the drop down here, we'll unselect one, and we'll hit OK. So now you can see I've got accessories, I come down to bikes. It just goes right into the next item. And if I go over standard cost, I've got it. So I've got rid of my splits and my missing data. I don't need this column anymore. I'll right click it and remove it. I don't need this column anymore. I'll right click it and remove it. As you can see, this is going to be an issue if we refresh this and accessories isn't the first name of the file in that folder this will throw an error because it won't find that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to highlight that text i'm going to replace it with an argument table dot column names and then i'll replicate what is shown right here as the last step. So pound filtered rows, and then it, I need to give it a column number. So since it are, it's grouping this in with one, that was technically column zero because it was the leftmost column. And this column that used to be called the name of the first file accessories was column two which in m language is really one since the first one is zero give it the column number there in those squiggly brackets and now that is a more robust query